السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا Welcome to this episode brothers and sisters where today inshallah we're going to be looking at the practicalities of how to make ruqya so how to practically sit down and make ruqya over yourself over a family member or a loved one and over your children as well before we talk about making ruqya for magic or jinn possession or evil eye or indeed for any health related issue i want to talk about the proactive measures that we can take on a day to day basis to protect ourselves inshallah to protect ourselves so that we don't need to be in a situation where we are possessed and we're making ruqya and these type of things so i want to talk about the proactive adhkar and these type of things that we can do inshallah in order to protect ourselves from the word go the first thing that i want to mention is your aqida is your creed and is your following of the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and take it as a qaida take it as a principle take it as a foundation the more you understand the sunnah the more you implement the sunnah the more you are upon the creed of the salaf as salih of those righteous predecessors the more you are going to be protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is our foundation upon this we build on the other things so the next thing i want to talk about are the five daily prayers you must be praying five times a day okay you must be praying five times a day it's so important al ahd alladhi bainana wa bainahuma as salah faman tarakaha faqad kafar the messenger alayhi salam said the covenant between us and them us being the muslims them being the non muslims the covenant between us and them is the prayer so whoever leaves the prayer has disbelieved this is what the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam told us brothers and sisters if you're not praying your five daily prayers on time okay on time then you're like an open door and the shayateen will come and go as they please the prayer after your aqeedah is the biggest form of defense it's your it's the first line of your defense after your aqeedah it's that fortress wall upon this fortress wall we have another fortress and that is those adhkar those duas from the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and those things which he would do those precautionary measures which he would take which he would use to seek protection from the shayateen so let's go through those inshallah the first one is ayatul kursi the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us whoever recites ayatul kursi in the morning he will be protected until the evening and whoever recites ayatul kursi in the evening he will be protected until the morning so if you recite ayatul kursi in the morning and in the evening insha allah by the permission of allah you will have 24 hours of protection likewise concerning ayatul kursi the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us whoever recites ayatul kursi before he sleeps then allah will appoint a guard for him until the morning and no shaitan will come close to him this is ayatul kursi ayatul kursi which is the greatest ayah of the quran the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us whoever recites ayatul kursi after each of the obligatory prayers then what stands between him and jannah is death There is nothing that stands between him and Jannah except for death. Insha Allah, if he has the correct aqid and he prays five times a day and he recites Ayatul Kursi after each of these five daily prayers, when he dies, what stands between him and Jannah is death. When he dies, he will go straight to Jannah by the permission of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Likewise, when you leave your house in the morning, the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us that if you leave your house in the morning and you recite. بسم الله توكلت على الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله بسم الله in the name of Allah I put my trust in Allah and there is no power and no might except with Allah then the messenger عليه السلام told us that the shayateen they will say 
How are you going to approach a man? How are you going to harm a man who his affairs have been sufficed and he is protected from in front of him and from behind him, from his right and from his left? Look at this subhanallah. We've already spoken about protecting your home with Surah Al-Baqarah and all the other issues which we have mentioned. And you can go back to that episode and we have spoken about this issue in detail. Other things that you can do. The Mu'awwidatayn. Okay, reciting Surah Al-Falaq and reciting Surah An-Nas. Okay, these are protections. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, nobody has ever sought refuge with anything greater than the one who seeks refuge with these two Surahs. Likewise, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us about the last two Surahs, or the, sorry, the last two Ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah. Rasul until the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. So just two ayahs. Whoever recites this at night, Allah will suffice him. They will suffice him. They will be enough for him. Enough for him in all of his affairs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice him. Likewise, we have those adhkar from the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He told us that if you go to a place and you recite, أَعُوذُ بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ التَّامَّاتِ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقِ I seek refuge with the perfect words of Allah from the evil of that which He has created three times, then Allah will protect you from all evils until you leave that place. Likewise, we have the, the, the other du'as. We have the other du'as. For example, أعوذ بكلمات الله التامة. I seek refuge in the perfect words of Allah. من كل شيطان وهامة. I seek refuge with the perfect words of Allah from every shaitan and every animal that stings and from every evil envious eye. Subhanallah, look at this. There are so many du'as in the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam where we can have proactive 24 hour round the clock protection by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But suppose now, you know that you are possessed or you watched the previous video where we spoke about some of the signs and symptoms of magic, some of the signs and symptoms of jinn possession or evil eye as well. And you want to perform ruqya over yourself. Practically now, how should I perform ruqya? The first thing is to humble yourself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No that he is your master and your creator and that you are just his slave. Humble yourself before Allah. Recognize your need in front of Allah. Recognize that you are powerless in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Wahid al-Qahar, al-Jabbar, al-Wahhab. You are powerless in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So humble yourself and know as Allah says and whatever affliction or whatever trial or calamity befalls you, it is from Allah. Nobody can raise it but Allah. Nobody can change your situation but Allah. So flee to Allah, run to Allah and beg of Allah. So humble yourself. Before you begin, humble yourself. The next point, make dua. So much dua. Dua is the weapon of the believer. Dua is the sword of the believer. And yet we don't make dua. We don't make dua. Make dua at the times when dua is accepted. So for example, when you are in prostration, make dua to Allah. Ask Him to send down His cure upon you. Ask Him to remove your difficulties. When you are traveling, the dua of the traveler is accepted. When it is raining, what a good time to make dua like the Messenger السلام, told us. When you are in a, a, a moment of immense difficulty or a moment of pain, a moment of need, make dua to Allah. On Yawmul Jum'ah, on the day of Jum'ah, make dua. In the last third of the night, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of these are times when the dua is accepted. So make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now practically, let's look at practically. What am I going to need? We have water. You're going to need some water. You're going to need some honey. You're going to need some 
olive oil. This is olive oil in here. And you're going to need some black seeds. These are black seeds. Okay? This water, I've just bought it for demonstration purposes. You need a, a, a bottle of water which is five or six liters. So you can have three two liter bottles or you can have one big five liter bottle or a six liter bottle. Okay? What do I now need to do? I need to first start with A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem and then Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Then I'm going to recite Surah Al Fatiha Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen and after each ayah spittle into the bottle. So when you're spittling it's not just spit and it's not just air, it's a mixture of the two. So you're going to say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin etc. until the end of the ayah. Do this, recite Surah Al-Fatiha three times. Okay, recite Surah Al-Fatiha into this bottle and don't forget it's going to be a much bigger bottle but this is just for purposes. Recite into the bottle three times. Recite into the olive oil three times. Okay, so you recite into the water and the olive oil as I have just mentioned. So you take the water and you recite Surah Fatiha three times. Now what you need to do, take the water and the oil and recite Surah Al-Baqarah. From beginning to end, recite all of Surah Al-Baqarah over this water and over this olive oil. Recite Surah Al-Baqarah and all the time, not after every ayah, but every so often, you should stop, maybe after every couple of pages or every three pages, stop and blow into the water, spittle into the water, spittle into the olive oil. Once you've recited all of Surah Al-Baqarah, then what you need to do is you should recite Ayat Al-Kursi. So go back now and just focus on Ayat Al-Kursi again. So you would say, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum la ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la nawm and you'd finish the uh, ayah. So you'd do this over the water, also over the olive oil. Then, you then go to surah number 2, ayah number 102. ma You recite this surah. وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَتْلُ الشَّيَاطِينُ عَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ So you would recite this again over this three times, over the olive oil three times, okay? Then you would go to surah number seven, surah number seven and recite from surah number seven, ayah number 115 to ayah number 119. Recite this three times, again, spittling into the water, spittling into the olive oil. Next, you would go to Surah number 10, Ayah number 79 to Ayah number 82. So again, Surah number 10, Ayah number 79 to 82, three times, spittling into the water, spittling into the olive oil. Then go and go to Surah number 20. Surah number 20, Ayah number 65 to Ayah number 70. Again, into the water, into the olive oil. You'll notice these last three surahs, which I have mentioned, surah number seven, surah number 10, surah number 20. In these surahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and surah, number four, uh, surah number two, which is uh, surah Baqarah as well, Allah's talking about magic. So we're dealing with the ayat of magic and we're reciting over the water as well. Next, go to the last two, uh, the last two ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay, so you're going to the last two ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 285 and ayah number 286. Again, recite three times each and spittle. Then go to Surah Ikhlas. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Recite this three times. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad. Again, over the water, over the olive oil. You do this for Surah Falaq three times and Surah Nas three times as well. Now we have 
what we have prepared of the water and we have the olive oil and we have the honey as well. Okay, now what we need to do? We need to, the olive oil is for you to apply in the night time. Okay, what I want you to do in the night time before you go to bed, apply this olive oil all over your body. Okay, so you say Bismillah from your head all the way to your toes. You apply this over your whole body. Okay, so every night for seven days you'll be using this uh, olive oil and you'll be applying this over your body. Now in the morning, what do you want to do? So let's start from the morning now. Take some of this water which you have recited over. There's going to be like eight li uh, six liters or five liters. Take a glass of this water. Pour this water in there. Then pour this glass into a bucket. Into a bucket, okay? And mix it with normal tap water. So you've got the water that you've recited on a glass of this and it's mixed in a bucket of normal water. Then make a ghusl with this water. Okay, you make a ghusl with this water. Now people ask, is it okay for this water which I have recited on to go down the drain? The answer is absolutely yes. Remember, with your recitation, this water does not suddenly become holy or does not suddenly become blessed. We're doing this, seeking a cure from Allah and this is one of the means that we are taking bi idhnillah. So it's fine for it to go down the drain because the water is just normal water as you would normally bathe with. So make a ghusl with this water. Then once you've made this ghusl and you've got ready and you're ready now, I want you to make a drink. Okay, what we do, we take a pinch of these black seeds. Okay, we take a pinch of black seeds because remember the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the black seed is a cure for every illness except for death. The Messenger Alaihi Wasallam said it's a cure for every illness but death. So take some of these black seeds. Okay, and you're going to have a glass of this water which you have recited on. Pour a glass, take some of these black seeds and put the black seeds into the water. Then mix the honey which you have, good quality honey. Mix at least a tablespoon of honey, a nice amount of honey, mix it in to the water. Because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that there, are, there is cure, there is a cure in three things which you people use. And one of the things that he mentioned is a drink of honey. Okay, a drink of honey. And this is where um, one of our teachers, Sheikh Adil, he said a lot of people get it wrong. They just eat the honey. They don't have the drink of honey. But the Messenger ﷺ mentioned specifically the drink of honey. There's shifa and a cure in the drink of honey. Okay, so you've got this water, you've mixed in some honey, you've mixed in some black seed as well. Now a question. I can't get hold of black seeds. Is it okay for me to use the black seed oil in the liquid form? The answer is yes, inshallah. If you get hold of the black seeds, that's better. If you can't get hold of the black seeds, then take some cold pressed uh, black seed oil, which is good quality black seed oil with nothing added, nothing taken away. And just take a tablespoon and add that to your drink. Okay, so you've got water mixed with honey, mixed with black seed. Okay, I want you to drink this three times a day, in the morning, in the evening and at night time. So for the first seven days what we are doing is in the morning we're taking a ghusl because we're washing off the oil that we applied the night before. Okay, so we take a ghusl with the rukya water. Okay, and then we take the rukya drink which is the water and the honey and the black seed. And we have this in the morning and in the evening and at night time. Okay, so I want you to follow this plan and then before bed, of course, we apply the olive oil. The following day, we take the ghusl and we wash it off. For seven days, I want you to follow this plan. For seven days, I want you to follow this plan. There's no other recitation. So for seven days, the first day is when you have to do a couple of hours of recitation. But this will see you through seven days, inshallah. Okay, so seven days, you're doing this plan. For the first couple of days, you might feel really, really bad. You might feel you're going to get headaches, you're going to get aches and pains and you, you yourself will be amazed. You're not really doing any physical activity, yet you're get, getting these aches, you're getting these pains, you're getting headaches. Don't worry about it. Keep going. Keep soldiering on. So keep going until the seven days. Okay, now what I want you to do is understand that this is where we really get difficult and we have to put a lot of effort in, inshallah.